Okay, let me preface this one. This isn't me trying to say that I've created the cleanest, sharpest image that's ever been committed to SD card from the GH5. This is more of an overly hipster way of explaining how you might go about doing that, if that's what you're interested in. So by now you're probably well aware of the GH5's anamorphic capabilities. So what I wanted to do was test out what that would look like without an anamorphic lens. So I'm taking the 5K readout from the sensor and I'm not de-squeezing it in post, I'm just using that as a four by three. More specifically, that 5K mode is giving you 4992 by 3744 pixels in a 10 bit format in 200 megabits per second. Wow. Now obviously they created that resolution so that you could stretch that out and still get a high resolution output from it. But without stretching that out, what that does is it gives you a frame to work with that's much bigger than 4K. Horizontally, you've got an extra 1,152 pixels to work with. And vertically, you have an extra 1,584 for reframing upwards and downwards. Now, unfortunately you don't get slow motion at those specs. If you're in the PAL mode, the 50 Hertz mode, you're only getting 25p at that resolution. But in the NTSC mode, you get 24 frames or 30 frames a second at that massive resolution. Just remember, if you're in the PAL region and you're trying to use the camera in the NTSC mode, you've got to be really careful with your shutter speeds and keep it at one over 50 or one over 100 to be considered safe in order to ensure you don't get any flicker when you're shooting indoors and you've got lights. There are 60p and 50p modes, but the resolution comes down and it doesn't output in 8-bit. So I didn't really use those in this test. I really wanted to see what I could get out of the camera at its maximum. And that's using the 200 megabits per second on my regular old SD cards, not even any external monitors, nothing like that. I really wanted to see how that would work out and you saw the results. Aside from fixing your composition, it gives you the flexibility in post to be able to do fake pans or tilts and really move that image around in a smooth fashion even if you were locked down on a tripod when you were filming. Say you wanted a rotating image, but you couldn't do that when you're shooting. For example, you don't have a, a gimbal like the Ronin S, which lets you completely go around 360 degrees. Using this anamorphic 5K mode is probably the best way of being able to do that in post because you've got an almost 4K resolution, even when the image is flipped on its side. So you don't need to zoom in as far to do this as, as you would do if you were doing this in 4K so the result will be as good as it can be. Let's suppose you weren't cropping in or rotating or trying to reframe your image. By the time you've got this footage down to a 16 by nine ratio, you've got a resolution of 4992 by 2808 pixels, which is still a lot bigger than 4K. And you're still able to shift the image up and down whilst keeping a really clean, really high resolution image. Even if you only intend to export that image to 4K, that oversampling of the image should give you a sharper result than actually shooting in regular 4K. So this isn't using any special lenses, it's just the GH5 using this mode, and you just need to be aware that your SD card should be a UHS-3 or a V30 type card, um, just to make sure you've got enough bandwidth there to deal with the 25 megabytes per second that you'll be throwing at it. In this anamorphic menu item here, you're picking which flavor of anamorphic you want, so which resolution you want to be working with, and which frame rate. Bearing in mind, the maximum frame rate that I use here is in 10-bit, that gives you an H.265 output. Do bear in mind that the IBIS inside the GH5 will also try and compensate for the anamorphic lens that you supposedly attach into the camera. So I go into the menu option, and I turn the anamorphic options off, so it's just dealing with the regular IBIS and it's not trying to factor in any de-squeeze that'll happen in post. Speaking of de-squeezing, in this menu option here, you wanna keep it off so that it doesn't stretch out the image when you're viewing it on the monitor while you're filming. You might also wanna consider the 16 by nine bars on your display. That'll help when you're out shooting, because obviously 
When you're in this anamorphic open gate mode, the resolution will fill the monitor as if you're taking a photo, the four by three aspect ratio. Knowing that you're gonna be outputting a 16 by nine video, you might want these guidelines on there just to help you keep your composition where you want it to be when you're out in the field. So that's how you'd use the GH5's anamorphic mode to try and get the cleanest, sharpest possible image out of the camera. Now that's not normally my priority, but if it is yours, maybe you're doing some architecture work or something like that, then this is definitely a tool that you wanna keep in the back pocket. Also, if you're working on projects where you might need to take stills out of your video footage, this is a really good option because obviously you can get a four by three still and it'll be relatively clean and it'll be sharper than what you can get even with 4K. And the last area where I can see this being useful is if you know that you'll need to export both a 16 by nine video, but also maybe a vertical video in a really high resolution. I know Instagram is probably gonna cremate any kind of vertical video you throw at it, but it will give you a really good resolution to be working with as a starting point. Downsides for me just come from the fact that it's gonna give you large file sizes. So it'll add extra strain on your SD memory. It'll fill up your hard drives even quicker. And to edit with, obviously you're dealing with a high bit rate H.265 image um, with a massive resolution. So my poor old 2015 MacBook Pro really did struggle with it. But once I'd converted to proxies, it was much more manageable until that last shot. For some reason, Final Cut Pro didn't like the overlaying of these layers on top of each other and the manipulation of that. It really struggled with that last scene. So just bear in mind, it could have an impact on your workflow. So there you go, that's my little roundup of the 5K mode on the GH5. It was an interesting little exercise and maybe worth a test if that's something you're interested in. For me, I guess my concluding thought would be I wouldn't get too caught up in sharpness. Um, you know, I fell in love with video before it even reached HD. So it's not the last word in the quality of your video. As a community, we shouldn't get too hung up on specs and impossibly sharp images, but it was a bit of fun. Thank you for stopping by and watching the video. I hope it was of interest. In my next one, I'll probably be looking at the GH Alex Lutt. Thank you for stopping by, I appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Oh, I know the taste of your lips under palm trees somewhere.